very, very important job today. What we're going to ask you to do is walk over to this wall right here and For a couple of years now, we've been trying to get design thinking into the sixth grade classroom. Is there any way we could get it to roll like this on into here? But this year, when David Sutton came into the picture, we realized that to do design thinking effectively, we had to have real life resources, community resources. I started the Boulder Center for Interactive Learning at Dawson, BCILD, for three principal purposes. The first was to build models for how schools can integrate themselves into their local community. In so doing, schools can think of themselves as part of their local community. The local community can think of schools as integrally part of themselves. And students can think of themselves as part of the real world experience of what's going on outside the school. <laughs> Dawson School is a really interesting uh, institution in that they do follow a traditional curriculum but they are very interested in progressive education and also open to ideas and how to enhance the learning experience of each and every child in the institution. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It comes down and it comes up and the kids don't know where it's going to land. So they have to think about how, how big is it. And so one side's much larger than the other. Design thinking is a very interesting process and it's a new, fairly, fairly new concept in terms of, of applying it to elementary school and middle school. For design thinking, you don't just come up with a solution that you think would work. You have to come up with a solution that works for the people you're making it for. In design thinking, we often thinking of redesigning what the question is because we're not entirely sure where we start. And that's what's a key feature to learning. Where do we start? what is relevant, and then we work through a process and we don't actually know what the result's going to be. We actually have to first determine what the problem is, and this is more like real life. Oh, I bet, yeah, we could have like a stream, like a stream that goes under it, so the water would go through and land in like a container underneath it after the bucket tip, but the ball could stay there, it would be like, this stream would be a land. Yeah. This semester, we worked with a local toy company called Kodo Kids. I knew Chris Hume, and I knew that he had a very interesting company in producing open-ended learning tools for pre-K classrooms. We started Kodo about eight years ago uh, when I had a little boy and discovered that uh, there really weren't intriguing toys out there in the consumer market and I was frustrated with the options that there were, and so I started to make my own toys. So he began the company, and I think that's a really wonderful story about his commitment to not only his own child, but to serving a lot of children, many children, as many as we can possibly serve. I have a, a product design background, so uh, I have an education in computer science, so programming, and then industrial design, which is product design. And I felt what an interesting idea to meld the production that he does with student input in a school. So I am from the Boulder Centre for Interactive Learning. Okay. And I basically set this up with Chris. Students could actually come and interact with a real business and in a sense that you have children making toys for children. We're making prototypes for Kodo Kids which is a toy company and one of their main focuses is 
learning while you're playing. I think there are two main important parts about the design thinking process. Firstly is that children learn to empathize with the client, the person needing the assistance, the challenge. So you really have to empathize and um, experience what the other people are experiencing so you know what kind of solution they need. That, that first step of empathy building was huge. When Chris came to school, he brought this large magna board with him and he showed the children his products and the thinking behind how he got to where he was. It's really cool. We're big proponents of, of helping kids uh, experience real world projects and have real world experience. Where's the sixth like color? And so bringing this real world project into the classroom where they're actually designing uh, a product uh, for our existing magnet wall was a great opportunity for the kids to really feel empowered and, and, and feel that they're doing something very real. The way children built empathy for Chris Hume was that they actually played with the manipulative, they heard what he had to say about his experiences with his product and his testing in preschools, and then they themselves went to preschools and saw children playing with this material, and they had visitors coming in of that age group to play with the set that Chris had provided. And then what the sixth graders did is they took that all of that information and they started brainstorming or ideating as we call it in the design thinking world. When you put children together in a room with a bunch of adults who know how to facilitate learning, you'll come up with as many answers as there are possible. So I've seen that whoever fell off had to get a really gradual descent so it didn't just go down. We want children to be able to answer a question five different ways rather than answering the same question five different times. The next step in the process is for the children to actually get into groups and work collaboratively on an idea which they think might be of benefit to the whole process and to Chris and to his business. Uh, it's got to attach to the magnet wall so there needs to be magnets on it. Um, so there are a lot of restrictions within this project but we left it open enough for them to experiment and, and use their imagination to create uh, an accessory. We want you to come up with something creative. So in a way I could stand up in here and say, yes, you can create this, or you can create this, or you can create this. But what I really want to happen is I want you to go create. The materials they used were things that they brought in from home. So some plastics, some pipes, um, cardboard material, rolls, anything that they think that they could use to enhance the um, general idea of what they were doing. There's like so much amazing stuff, so here's what you might be tempted to do. I'll take this, I'll take this, I'll take this, I'll take this, I'll take 10 of this, I'll take this! That's not what you're going to be doing. And then we can use one of these and things. Well, no, she so said to just focus on one thing right now. She said to not get a bunch of things. Then they would build the actual prototype and test it out to see how viable it is just within the context of a prototype and then present that idea to Chris as, this is our idea for uh, something new and different that Chris had not currently put onto his materials. To have a space that's got noise and a little bit of mess and some enthusiastic children who are going to propel um, their thinking forward by collaborating and working together. And collaboration is a very important process because you need to respect not only your opinion and have your opinion heard and validated, but you need to do that for other people. What we like, I think, most as working as a team is how we can improve the idea to make everybody kind of enjoy making it instead of just like, okay, I'm making this, you're making that, and then like assigning jobs, we all work on one project to add different details. Difficult problems and difficult ideas really are best solved through a collaborative process in most instances, and traditional learning 
doesn't really cater to uh, collaborative work. And as the complexity of the nature of the problems that we've faced as a society increases, so too does the need to collaborate. Um, what was great to see then was that their ability to take a little bit of somebody's idea and a little bit of somebody else's idea, kind of find a way to, to modify it, to, to recreate it, to combine it into what, what ended up being some really good ideas. Then they had to build this idea. And this is where a lot of the, the failing happened. We are making a Rube Goldberg project. No, we're not. Oh. <laughs> like when they fail and it doesn't work, they can try again. And when they make it work, like they can learn and like how um, things work that they learn that failure is okay and that it's not like a really bad thing to fail and you don't have to give up when you fail. Oh, we had a lot of trouble with this little system up here. We were trying to do it with like CDs and stuff and we kind of like got so tired of like failing that we just used a 3D, 3D printer and printed out what would work. I think children are quite scared of failing for themselves, for their teacher and around their friends in their classroom. Um, well, mine um, are, sorry. <laughs> this sort of a process makes them aware that in the real world, failure is the actual part of the process of developing something. Whether it's a piece of music, an essay, a product, something that they see, because I think children today really only see final product. The children came up with the ideas for their products themselves. Chris did not want to interfere with their creative process by leading or suggesting where they should go or where he had in mind to go with his product. Our theme is sound, and so we're attaching our pieces to the board to show how they make sound. We use a lot of trial and error. So this is like our tent pulley and stuff like that. H2 grow. Okay. This is our water wheel. And so these are going to be detachable water wheel pieces. We can have different size boxes and different color boxes. So there would be an axle between the magnet wall and the water wheel. And so we would use an axle and then we would be able to Either the wheel would move with the water or with the handle. It's probably teaching them to communicate and and it's teaching them gravity. Put that back on. Put that on there. Put that on there. So the name of our project is Rainbow Road. So what it does is it's supposed to make kids be able to play together and be more social, but also learn more things at the same time. So it's educational and it helps kids work together more because there's more than one, but right now we're just testing one color. We're teaching them the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And so, and we're also teaching them textures and how that affects friction. And um, we made this, we just used glue and put different amounts of glue on different things. And um, these are gonna be detachable so multiple kids can play. If two kids want to play and they don't want as many ramps, it can be detachable, so there's only two. That's how it works. The kids built an initial prototype, and then we had um, a series of judges and parents and, and young, younger students come through and kind of look at the pros and cons of what they, what they had. And then they built a second prototype. And it's that prototype that they presented to the Koto Kids founder, Chris Hume. They took it so seriously. They dressed up, they looked really nice. It was the first, um, first thing in the morning. Um, they knew there were actually some reporters there from the Daily Camera and from the, I think the Longmont Times call. So it was it was a big deal. The actual experience with Kodo was real world in the sense that they were involved with an actual businessman in developing a product which potentially could actually go to the market. All right. 
could be wrong, they could make mistakes, their model could collapse. Our How Might We was, how might we create a toy that keeps kids playing and is, it also helps them learn. We will drop a ball down a ramp and there's going to be a bell hanging right here and when the ball hits it, it's going to work. And in this group with the different keys that they can move around and create different patterns that create different musical songs essentially. Very cool. So in this configuration on our board, the ball starts up here, it goes down this ramp, it hits the back of this trampoline cup, it hits this smaller trampoline, hits the bigger trampoline, and then hits another smaller trampoline, rolls down a ramp and falls into the cup. I intended for their projects to be much simpler um, and singular than they ended up being. And so they presented these very complex projects. First, um, the ball rolls through this is the sound tube, which it only not only makes the kids happy when it goes through, but when they move it around and make sound. They need to um, sometimes like change things to make them work how they want. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm curious what you think makes your project so collaborative. What makes them want to work together? And while we were observing, like preschoolers playing with the magnet ball, we realized a lot of them would have like multiple people holding stuff while one person dropped the ball to see if it would work and then they'd like kind of knit it on or whatnot. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, so if, kids, if they work together, then they would learn like not to give up and keep trying and everything. Um, the water wheel. And we are H2 Grow. Growing minds with water. They have different boxes that they can put on that water wheel that allows the kids to see, okay, more water in the bigger box is heavier than less water in the smaller box. You know, it allows them to experiment with size, you know, that volume of water, and then also different materials that go with that. That's, that's really exciting. Um, our tagline is play together, learn together, and we got that because our how might we was how might we get kids to play together, but also learn it together at the same time. So our tagline is play together, learn together, because if you play together, you can all play. So the steps for it is it goes into the tube, and then there are these little levers. This one, I think, is very unique. Um, because you've got like, a whole system that's actually coming off the wall and then when we met before there were parts and pieces that could get connected together with little levers that move the ball in different areas. Um, that concept in general I think is really, it's like bringing all the loose parts and pieces on the wall but together in a single unit. I was, I was definitely surprised by the things they came up with. Ingenuity of, of sixth graders uh, is pretty spectacular and, and their uh, imagination around just what can happen, and what, what physics allow to have happen, uh, to happen uh, on the magnet wall. You made a comment about randomness, teaches about randomness, which I think is a very interesting thing, because really all of these parts and pieces are kind of random if they're taken off individually. Um, so how do you think that your particular set allows kids to take that randomness and make it into a structure for them to learn with. Well, with they learn about all the different angles and configurations and then they know that because of that randomness, they start to see that like if we put this over here, it's not gonna make it far enough. Ours is random because they can like change up the xylophone and change up the drums so it can make a different pattern of music every time. So you're kind of taking all these random parts and allowing the child to organize them to bring structure and maybe make music or to have a series of physical events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, cool. Essentially, children learn here how to collaborate with their hands, and which is really important at this age of a child because they're not really verbal collaborators yet. But if you learn to collaborate with your hands, it's not a big jump to move from hands to sitting in a group and collaborating as you did. And I think that's a really important skill that they can really uh, learn early in their lives. Thank you guys. Thank you. Nice. Really good.
this was a great opportunity for Kodo to uh, reach out and have interaction with an older uh, group of children and to get that input from from those children I think is valuable because it it's kind of the next level of thinking in in childhood um, and seeing their social interactions with each other and with me and with the panel um, was very interesting to think about okay what should we be developing in younger children to then be better at presenting and thinking through problems and all those things when they get to sixth grade. I enjoy building the most because you get to create prototypes that are fun and you, the kids get to learn and you get to really think up and there wasn't really many limits for what we could do so they're really like variated prototypes. Just from a week ago to here it's, they've taken these like very loose concepts and really brought a lot of meaning to them. Mm -hmm. which is, and I think what got them that far was the fact that that empathy building piece where they really, they really watched kindergarten. That really drove the production. Well, that was just unbelievable. When they got back in their groups, following that, they were like, but, but Mr. Hume said, no, yeah. and here's what Mr. Hume liked, and they really, that resonated with them, they really got mm -hmm. it, they, they heard you. Mm -hmm. And over time, they've become so much more cohesive. In the beginning, they were using a lot of the terms, but now, you know, several weeks now, it gets clear that they understand the application of those terms. I think what was surprising for me in this process was that children were very creative. I really thought that they were that they had the ideas and they were just waiting for an opportunity to express themselves. I thought they worked very well together because I, I always imagine that children who don't know how to collaborate that much in an official sort of a setting where there's a, certainly a time pressure, it's a novel concept. It works! It's, it's just a different way of expressing themselves and Design thinking is a complicated process and the way they handle themselves in a collaborative effort with this project really impressed me. and they are very observant and they have an intuitive ability to be creative and add to the lives of those around them and I think that this was a perfect opportunity for them to actually show their creativity in a physical manifestation.